<laughs> at this point, you might as well go in your bag, pull out a piping hot Arby's beef and cheddar <laughs> with a non fat soy latte. Like, I know it's the apocalyptic air, but shit. Hey, everyone, and hail to the fellowship. I thank you guys for tuning in. I am your nerdy normie reviewer, the Elvin Barber, one half of Where Those Guys. Now, today I'm flying solo. My co host TC couldn't be here, but uh, I wanted to do a review of The Last of Us. It's been a couple of weeks now, and I wanted to go over episodes three and four. So, episode three. This episode definitely went to a gay direction. I mean, gay erection. No, no, no. Direction. I'm sorry. Don't cancel me. But the director said they were deviating in this episode. That's what they said. They said they were going to deviate in this episode. And boy, did they not put the D and deviate, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. <laughs> Okay, first, let me start off by saying nothing in this episode really resembled the game. Um, episode three was not what I anticipated at all. I knew we would get Bill and Frank, but these weren't the characters from the game. Perhaps Bill started off that way, but he didn't end up the Bill that we all know from The Last of Us Part One. In the game, Bill's a great character, probably a fan favorite. You know, he's well prepared. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind and he doesn't hold back. In episode number three, this episode here, Bill's a completely different character. They took his story, they took his agency, they took everything away from him. Bill in The Last of Us in the TV series, he now lives in a gay post-apocalyptic fairy tale where for many, many years they did not get affected by the outside world. I'm talking viruses, the clickers, the bandits. I mean, nothing. They lived in a utopic life. I mean, there was one occasion when, like, there was a group of bandits trying to burst in their town, but, you know, to no avail. But that was the one instance where I could remember anything of substance uh, happening in their, this entire time. The showrunners and director completely character assassinated both Bill and Frank when they gave Frank some kind of terminal illness not quite sure what it was but it left him immobile i mean it got to the point where bill i'm sorry yeah it got to the point where bill was asked by uh frank to help himself delete uh to which bill wanted to self-delete himself they tried to make this romantic. It was, I didn't get that at all. It was as if Bill's meaning for life was over because it was based on his sexuality, essentially. You know, he was just so in love with with Frank that he, you know, that's he couldn't even live without him. This is not the last of us, Bill. <laughs> they essentially turned this entire narrative into propaganda. Into a gay propaganda. If you played the video game, you know Frank dies due to self-deletion, yes, but only because he was bitten. He left Bill looking for a particular item and got infected. So he, you know... It, because he didn't want to transform or turn, he, you know, decided to, you know, self-delete. Uh, Bill and Joel end up fighting him. Very impactful moment, very impactful scene in the game. But why would we get that, right, in this series? Why would we get that? Oh, wait, I know why. There was an article that came out recently that 
you know, said the director of episode three sole purpose was to trick people into watching a gay romance. That's legit what the director said. Like how cra- how manipulative and crazy is that? And fucking bold, first and foremost. Like it's one thing when you put the message in there and you know the message is there, the agenda, but they don't speak on it, but they're actually speaking on it. Like they don't care anymore. They'll they'll publicize it now. It's it's insane. Before that article, I was going to say if I separated the show from the games as if it were its own entity, then it was pretty well written, the show. You know, it was a pretty well written display of a couple finding one another in a post-apocalyptic era. Yeah, a lot of the shit might have not been realistic, but I mean, it's it, it was okay. I wasn't a fan, but it was all right. But knowing what I know and how the director feels, manipulation never scores any points with me. It's fucked. And uh, yeah, this episode wasn't, it was so divided. Like there were a lot of people who either loved it or hated it or somewhere in between. I guess personally, I'm somewhere in between probably more on the dislike side because of what the director said. That's kind of fucked. It's kind of fucked. So overall, I'd probably give this episode, if I hadn't played the game, I would probably give this episode maybe like a five, you know, four or five. But because I have played the game, I know how powerful certain moments and scenes can be that weren't displayed, that should have been displayed. I would probably give this episode like a one. It was like a one. Which moves us on to episode number four. The latest episode. Again, like the previous episodes, it starts off slow. Episode four. And holy shit, the product placement was so bizarre. It was so weird, right? Usually we get like a show me, but don't tell me in the episode. But in this one, we got a little bit of both (laughs) when it came to the product placement, like some legit commercials. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. This is what I saw. We get Ellie eating the canned food, expressing how good it is after all these years. And Joel's like, you know, she's like, oh, what is this? And Joe's like, of course, you know, it's, you know, Chef Boyardee, <laughs> the ravioli. And she's fucking killing it, right? Name drop. Uh, there was a Starbucks reference made by one of them. I think it was by Ellie, maybe. I'm like, okay, so now we're dropping Starbucks. Hell, there was even an Arby's reference made by Joel. <laughs> Damn, at this point, you might as well go in your bag, pull out a piping hot Arby's beef and cheddar (laughs) with a non-fat soy latte. Like, I know it's the apocalyptic air, but shit. Like, you might as well bring out all these things if you're putting them in the show. My God, it was almost overkill. So I thought that was funny. Uh, We also get a fair amount of bonding between Joel and Ellie in this episode, which, you know, I did enjoy those moments. You know, the scene with the truck, with the porn mag and the bit, you know, was similar to the game. I didn't mind that. There was also a bit where he was showing her how to use a gun. There was also a bit where they were having fun with the joke book. So there were, you know, moments that were, you know, similar to the game. And what I found interesting, you know, what grabbed my attention. And then there were moments where I was like, here we fucking go, (laughs) right? So in this episode, we get the trap scene. They're in the truck and, you know, they there's a city of bandits and, you know, they're trying to get distracted and... And they get, you know, run off the road. It's a little bit different than the game. It's a little bit different than the game. 
I didn't like how, you know, they used Ellie to save Joel so early in the game. It was a while, you know, before Ellie ended up saving Joel. And by that point, they had formed this really strong bond, this really strong relationship where she relied on him so much. And then he gets really injured and she has to step up and take care of him, which makes that moment and that scene powerful and impactful. And, you know, you know where she's coming from, but it, in the show, they had her save him real early, which I think it takes away from both of their characters. I think that they're deconstructing Joel, making him less competent, taking away his agency in order to make Ellie more independent and stronger, which is kind of odd because she's a 14 year old girl in the post-apocalyptic world. She knows nothing. You know, Joel should be the competent one taking the reins, has the agency, knows what he's doing, very competent. Yet they've, you know, they've taken that away from him. They also took away her kill scene as well. In the show, she tells Joel that she has taken a life. But it would have been nice to see that, you know, to see that moment, to witness how that scene changed her, how she coped with that experience. You know, these are the things that, you know, we missed out on, that they took away, that we missed out on, which I think could have added a lot to the character and to the story. We <laughs> we then meet the leader of the bandits in the city, uh, Karen. I forgot her name. I'm gonna call her Karen. Uh, she's uh, <laughs> not believable as a leader at all. She's not even from the game. This is the part they, you know, they kind of made up but she's horrible, she's insufferable, and she's emotional. And I say she's emotional because she turns and kills their only doctor in a post-apocalyptic society, which is fucking insane. Insane. Like, she wants to get this doctor to flip and snitch on Henry which that's a whole nother thing. Their story got changed as well. So she wants this doctor to flip and switch and, and snitch. I'm sorry. And the doctor really doesn't know much. Yet she just ups and kills him. Ups and kills him. Immediately I thought to myself, wow, definitely looks like a great leader right there. Right. <laughs> Leadership quality, she's got it, hands down. She's unhinged, for sure. She's really unhinged. But she's looking for Henry and Sam, and she's willing to kill anyone and do anything to find them, which is insane. Insane. And so, you know, like I said before, they ended up changing uh, Henry and Sam's story. I'm sure that... uh <clears throat> I'm sure that um, a lot of it, you know, we'll, you know, we'll see in episode five. Just the whole snitch, snitching the group out and stuff like that. Like, I don't, I don't like why do we don't need this other entirely different story. <laughs> like it doesn't add anything to what's going on whatsoever. That's that's when the show in the game, you know, uh, Henry and Sam, they get separated. The brothers, they get separated from the group. They're trying to get back to the group. In the show, apparently they Henry's a snitch and, you know, the, all this other drama. It's so dumb. Finally, we get more moments with Joel and Ellie at the end of the episode. Like I said, I don't really mind those moments. And then the episode ends with the brothers, Henry and Sam, pointing their guns at Ellie and Joel. So, yeah, that was episode number four. 
I would give this probably a five rating. It's pretty mid. I would say five or six. It was pretty mid. The uh, production was good. Aesthetically, it's good. The set's good. I really get a sense for the world, you know, they're living in, which is great. Dialogue is pretty good. The acting is really good. I mean, there was one scene where this guy was literally crying out to his mother because he didn't want to die. And you felt that. You actually felt that. So the acting was on point. Bella Ramsey is Ellie. I'm still on the fence about that. Like, I, like I want to like it, but it's just, it's not the same. It's just not the same. Pedro Pascal, I mean, he's all right. It's Joel. He's not reinventing the wheel or anything, but he's doing what he has to do with, you know, the, what they're giving him as far as material. So, but I would say overall, you know, the as far as production goes, it's it's stellar. You know, episode three and four, dialogue, acting, it's just the the material. You know, it's it's not great. A lot of the story, a lot of the game stories written better. <laughs> Than what we get in the show. I know it's hard to do a great ad- adaptation of a video game, but you can try, right? You can try. So, but yeah, so I thank you guys for tuning in. I do ask that you smash that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, you know, let, let me know, let us know what you think about the episodes. Hit that bell for future notifications, share this video out there, and you guys have a good one. You guys take care.